Okay, so good day everyone. So I will discuss to you our lesson 3, chapter 3. No? Genetically modified organism, science, health, and politics. So what are the objectives of this lesson? No? At the end of this lesson, the student should be able to identify issues on genetically modified organisms or the GMOs. Discuss different implications and impact of GMOs. So, so in 2001, Rosalie or Miss Rosalie Elaso, so this is one of the success story ng genetically modified organism. Kung saan si Rosalie Elaso ay isang former overseas Filipino worker in Singapore and it uh, and turned to farmer. So, nag siya ng integrated pest management sa Farmers Field School and was uh, na-introduce siya to BT corn. So, what is BT corn? It is a genetically modified corn that is resistant to the destructive Asian corner, uh, Asian corn borer. So, ang Asian corn borer ay yan yung corn na peste sa mga uh, corns. No? So, si Ms. Elaso, Eliasus, Elas, Eliasus, ay nag-volunteer siya for demo testing sa kanyang field. No? So, the BT corn yielded 7.2 tons per acre as, as compared doon sa regular yield na 4.2 tons lang per hectare. So, meaning mas marami yung naging harvest ng BT corn kesa doon sa regular corn. Kasi nga, ang BT corn is uh, resistant siya doon sa corn borer, doon sa mga peste na worms. Okay, so saan ba nag-start? Or ano ba ang uh, ang GMO? So, nag-start siya as genetic engineering. So, noong 1951, the term genetic engineering was coined by Jack Williamson. So, ang genetic engineering uh, meaning has been with the human society since since uh, selective breeding was introduced to humankind and nung yung animals were domesticated and yet the process of genetic alteration is all but natural so si Jack is also ang author ng science uh, fiction novel na Dragon Island so yung Dragon Island na yan is nakafocus yan sa genetic engineering now um through the continuous search for development ng genetic engineering, no longer uh, stayed in science fiction novel and naging reality siya in science laboratories. So si Watson and Crick, they showed that the DNA could be the medium of transmission of genetic information. So that was the years before the actual research finding ng DNA roles in hereditary and its structure. So yan ay dahil kay Helix of Watson and Crick uh, were published. Now, the genetic engineering was also uh, ginagamit or ginamit siya as uh, nung, nung uh, nakapag-produce ng E. coli bacteria. So, E. coli bacteria was created in 1973. So, up to date, there are ongoing researches sa GMOs gaya ng uh, paggamit no, ng modified male mosquitoes as pest control over the female mosquitoes kasi ang female, female mosquitoes ay ang carriers ng Zika virus. So, however, despite of the many possibilities of creating solutions for problems, uh, and opening doors for innovations and genetic engineering faces much oppositions for them. So, genetically modified organism. So, ano ba yan? Uh, ang genetically modified organism or the GMO is a term used for an organism that is created through genetic engineering. So, the World Health Organization or the WHO, no, they defined uh, they define the GMO as an organism, so either plant, animal, or microorganism na kung saan ang genetic material known or ang DNA known has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally by mating or natural recomb 
combination, meaning may nodify yung genes. No? As you can see, in dito sa example natin, no? yung lemon, meron siyang pomelo, may lemon, and merong kiwi. So, meaning modified yung genes niya para maging ganyan siya. So, what is the roles no, of uh, the GMO in food and agricultural industries? So, the centri, or Center for Egocentrics, uh, Ecogenetics rather, and Environmental Health identified the following roles of GMOs in the food and agricultural industries. So, number one role niya is pest resistance. 730, ma'am. Apa? Yes, ma'am. So, number one pest uh, role na GMO sa uh, agriculture, food and agriculture is pest resistance. So, pest resistance meaning uh, resistance siya to a certain pest. Magaya ng BT corn natin. Yung DNA ng ating BT corn or yung genome niya has been modified with the gene of Bacillus thuringiensis or the BT. Ang BT or the Bacillus thuringiensis, thuringiensis is a soil bacterium na nakapag-produce ng proteins which is toxic sa corn borers or sa worms. Number two roles is uh, virus resistance. So, the genetically modified plants to resist a certain virus. Example niya is the GM papaya or rainbow papaya. So, the papaya ring spot virus or the PRSV is known to be detrimental to papaya plants. And the protein of PR PRSV was introduced to the papaya plant through plant tissue which turned out to be resistant to the virus itself. And an effect on yan is like the vaccines ng humans against measles or influenza virus. So maganda, maganda yung, yung pinalabasan sa papaya. Wala siyang mga ring spots like that. Yung mga genetically modified uh, papayas. So number three, a herbicide tolerance. So, meaning the genetically modified plants to tolerate herbicides. So, example naman yan is the Roundup uh, Ready Soybean. So, the glyphosate or the herbicide for weeds. So, ano ba ang herbicide? Uh, ang herbicide is a substance that is toxic to plants. Uh, so, it was... Um, introduced to soybeans, making it tolerant to the herbicide itself. So, um, herbicide is as toxic uh, to plants. So, ginawa nila, uh, tinolerate nila or sinanay nila yung isang uh, plant, no? uh, particularly yung soybean, sa soybean nila tinry. Herbicide tolerance yung plants para it used to destroy the unwanted vegetation. So, the, ang mga farmers ay kaya nilang or in-spray nila yung, yung, herbicide, yung herbicides. No? And pinapatay niyan yung weeds but not the soybeans. So, number three as fortification. So, fortification is a genetically modified plants fortified with certain minerals. So, example is the golden rice or the beta-carotene. So, precursor of vitamin A ang beta-carotene. So, it was introduced through biosynthesis genes the, sa ating rice, making the rice grains fortified with vitamin A. So, number five is cosmetic, cosmetic preservation. So, genetically modified plants resist natural discoloration. Example natin is an arctic apple. So, the apple variety was genetically modified to suppress the browning of apple due to superficial damage. So, ang apple kasi ay naging brown due to uh, the cold temperatures. So, kapag ka, uh, na-expose siya sa cold temperatures, it caused... Uh, oxidative damage, which is nagbabrown siya. No? And uh, kapag ka ang apple ay na-expose to more oxygen than they, uh, than they can absorb, so bitter pit, it of course um, discoloration doon sa skin ng apple or ng fruit. So magiging brown siya as well as magkakaroon ng spots on the flesh. So, to, to uh, avoid 
discoloration. So, uh, minodify nila. Yung ginagamit na niyan sa cosmetic preservation. So, next is, uh, role, next role is the increased growth rate. So, ang genetically modified organisms ay mayroong mas higher yield in growth than normal species. So, for example natin is itong aqua advantage salmon. So, ang gene from an ocean pout or an eel like fish was introduced to Pacific Chinook salmon, making the salmon grow faster than its normal rate. So, as you can see, ang normal rate ng salmon is itong maliit lang, pero napalaki nila ng mas mabilis doon sa normal rate yung ating salmon. So, may na-define nila. Now, GMOs in non-food crops and microorganisms. So, genetically modified organisms or GMOs is non in non-food crops and some microorganisms involve the following. So, ito naman yung roles niya. For example, flower, number one is flower production. So, the GMOs in flower production are seen in modified color and extended base life of flowers. For example, is the term blue rose or in English, uh, signific signified the impossible because nobody could produce blue roses by hybridization. Wala namang makakapag-produce niyan in normal way no, ng breeding ng uh, roses no matter how much they were desired. However, the impossible has become possible due to the cutting edges of biotechnologies and the continuous efforts ng ating scientists. So, minodify nila yung plant or yung, yung genes ng rose natin. Next is paper production. So, in paper production, na modify nila yung characteristics ng trees for, a, for higher yield of paper production. Examples are popular trees na Lignin. Uh, Linin o lignin. I'm not sure kung paano siya bigkasin. No? So, it is a complex polymer in trees that is removed from wood to make paper through craft process. Through inserting genes that code for ferulic acid in young popular trees, the lignin structure is modified, making lignin easier to break down. So, yeah. So, next is the pharmaceutical production. So, pharmaceutical productions, ang mga GMO natin or GMO plants ay nakapag-produce ng pharmaceutical products. So, ito, as nakikita nyo na to is the periwinkle. Nakikita nyo lang yan as the mo dito sa atin. So, they are the periwinkle plants. No? And the bacterial genes ay, ay inad sa kanila, inad sa halaman na yan, sa periwinkle plant para ma-enhance yung production nyo ng vinblastine. So, ang vinblastine is an alkaloid usually uh, added to drugs for cancer treatments like Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, nagkaroon siya ng uh, gamot para sa certain disease. Kasi na-modify yung kanyang genes. So, next is for bioremediation. So, it is use of modified plants that can assist in the bioremediation of polluted sites. So, an example is shrub tobacco or nicotinia glauca or shrub tobacco. So, genetically modified with uh, pytokelatin or the top, the top C1. So, it is used for bioremediation. So, it shows high level of accumulation ng zinc, ng lead, ng cadmium, nickel, and boron. And nakakabag-produce siya ng high biomass. So, next is the enzyme and drug production. So, uh, it is used uh, modified microorganisms that can produce enzymes for food processing and medicine. So, one example of this is the CGTase. Uh, uh, cyclomaltodextrin glycosidetransferase or the CGTase. So, that is an enzyme na ginagamit for food flavor enhancer and it is produced in higher quantity by bacterium or the bacillus which was genetically modified with the gene of thermophilic anaeroba, anaerobe, or the thermo anaerobacter carrying CGTase, or the pedersin and jersey 1995. Okay, so next is genetically modified organism 
or the GMOs in non-food crops and some microorganisms involve the following. So, ito naman for the non-foods. So, GMOs in the medical field. So, genetic engineering is playing a significant role diagnose, diagnosis to treatment of human dreaded diseases. So, it helps in the production of drugs, gene therapy, and laboratory researches. So, one example is the humulin. Humulin is the genetically engineered insulin na ginagamit for type 1 diabetes patients who are insulin dependent in 1996. So, modified human insulin was approved and it was called the Humalo. So, in the past kasi, um, in the past, ang, ang insulin is extracted from the pancreas of pigs or cows and it have caused uh, allergic reactions to some diabetic patients na gumagamit niyan. So, dati wala namang human insulin. Ang human insulin ay galing sa pancreas ng pigs at cows e nagka-cause siya ng allergic to some, allergic to some uh, diabetic patients na gumagamit niyan noon. So, in 1978, uh, the researchers or researchers from the City of Hope, the National Medical Center and Genetic Biotechnology Company, they were able to produce human insulin. And the gene of insulin was inserted to bacterial DNA that was able to produce almost exactly the same human insulin. Tayo kasi meron tayong natural insulin sa katawan. And this was a breakthrough in the mass production of human insulin. And yan na siya ngayon, no? the human law. So benefits of GMO. So study shows some of the potential benefits of GMOs. Number one is higher efficiency in farming so with the use or with the use of pesticide resistance or herbicide tolerance ang gmo crops nat sa gmo crops natin there will be less use of uh mababa yung pag or he pwedeng hindi na tayo possible hindi na tayo gumamit ng herbicides or pesticides and uh magkakos yun ng lower cost of labor and cultivation. Kaya higher yung efficiency natin in farming. Number two is increase in harvest. Since genetically modified siya to uh, resist the pest or herbicide resistance or tolerance or pesticide uh, resistance siya. So the GMO crops resistance to pest and diseases. So it means uh, tataas yung ating potential growth and harvest. Next is control in fertility. So, controlling the purity of the hybrid seeds or the GMO seeds ensures higher yields. So, kagaya nung sa BT corn, no, instead na 4.2 lang for regular, naging 7.2 per acre. Per hectare na yung 4.2 per hectare, e paano kung per acre ay 7.2? So, mas mataas ng dihamak yung ating harvest. So, number four is increasing in food processing. So, altered characteristics ng GMO crops ay nakakatulong to is food processing then. And um, next is the nutritional and pharmaceutical enhancement. So, GMOs offers shelf life. No, na-enhance niya yung color, yung taste, na-enhance niya yung production or reduction ng enzymes and other modified characteristics ng plants and animals natin and ng other microorganisms. So, next is reduce the use of fer uh, fertilizer and pesticides. So, kagaya na sabi ko kanina, no, the GMO crops is like maize fortified with uh, lysine and uh, for example, the golden rice is fortified with vitamin A. So, uh, vitamin and A and iron. And there are no edible vaccines for viral and diarrheal diseases. So, yung mga vaccines natin, those are GMO products. May na-modify yung mga DNAs para maging uh, uh, vaccines. So, there are over 400 million acres of GMO farmlands all over the world. So, these are some you know, countries. 
that have GM or farmlands. So United States, Brazil, India, Canada, and Argentina. So some of the GMO agricultural crops that have been approved for public consumptions and are already in market are the alfalfa. So ang alfalfa ay native, uh, native ng southwestern Asia, alfalfa, uh, corn, papaya, soya bean, sugar beets, ayan yung alfalfa. Corn, papaya, soya bean, sugar beets, and squash. So, yan yung, yung mga uh, GMO products which are already approved for public consumption and are already available in market. Now, these are some examples naman of common foods with GMOs. So, karamihan naman syempre corns no? and karamihan sa products ng Quaker ay made of quartz. So, yan ay mga genetically modified products. So, potential risk of GMOs. Of course, meron yung risk kasi nga uh, genetically modified yung, organ, yung, yung product. So, in non-food crops and some microorganisms, it involved the following. So, number one, since genetic engineering is still young branch of science, there are inadequate studies on the effects of GMOs to humans and the environment. So, pagka na-consume ba natin yan, there is a possibility ba na yung genetically modified is mapunta sa atin or ma-modified din yung genes natin? No, isang question yun or isang risk yun. Next, um, genetic engineering promotes mutation in organism which the long-term effect is still unknown. So, nag-mutate siya. For example, yung isang uh, BT corn, na decade siya or namatay siya. Siyempre, genetically modified siya. So, yung genes niyan mapupunta sa oils and other microorganisms ng soil natin. So, mag-mutate ba siya doon? Ano yung magiging epekto ng genes na napunta doon sa uh, other microorganisms? So, risk, uh, risky. Ano ba? So, hindi pa rin natin alam kung ano magiging epekto nun. Number three is human consumption. Consumption of GMOs might have the following effects. Number one is more allergic reactions. Since the GMO food may trigger more allergic reactions, more so, kaya niya rin makapag-create ng bagong allergic reactions or symptoms ng allergic reactions as side effect ng gene alteration. Kasi hindi siya naturally na genes, no? May, ano siya, modified. Next is gene mutation. So, the GMO food may develop abnormalities and mutation. More than the deserved product of the gene alteration. Number three is antibiotic resistant. So, the GMO food contains antibiotic resistant genes. So, this may cause disease causing bacteria like to be more antibiotic resistant to. So, yung katawan natin is, of course, meron tayong natural antibiotic sa katawan. And kapag ka na-resistant na or uh, ang katawan natin ay resist na, sanay na sa antibiotic, no? it will increase the possibility of widespread ng disease or else hindi niya na magamot yung a certain disease. Hindi na siya tatalab sa'yo kasi uh, parang na-resist na yung katawan mo sa antibiotic. Next is nutritional value. So, the nutritional value a GMO food may have changed in their uh, nutritional value since siya ay modified nga. So, yung ibang genes doon or ibang nutritional value niya is na modified din. So, it has a potential risk. So, potential risk naman sa environment that is caused by GMOs. So, sabi ng, ng Karki 2006, sum, they summarize the perceived potential environment risk caused by the GMOs. And they, ident a, and they identified major risk of, uh, and these are the following. So, number one is risk in gene flow. So, there is a potential risk ng modified gene to be transferred from the GMO crop to its wild relatively or organisms in the soil and human intestine kapag ka na-swallow na natin siya or na-intake na natin siya. So, 
And pagka na, yun nga, yung example ko kanina, kapag ka na-decay yung isang GMO plant, no? since modified yung organisms na yun, mapupunta siya sa soils and other branches or microorganisms natin sa soil. So, ano ba yung magiging epekto nun doon? Ano ba yung risk na mangyayari doon? Magmamutate ba siya? Makuklone or whatsoever? Next is emergence of new forms of resistance and secondary pest and weed problems. So, ang GMO crops is resistant siya to certain pesticides and it may trigger new form of pest resistance while ang GMO herbicide tolerant crops can lead to the overuse of herbicide which may trigger na naman ng bago form ng weed resistance. So magkakaroon na naman tayo ng bagong form ng pest or bagong form ng weeds. So, next, number three is recombination of virus and bacteria to produce new pathogens. So, the modified gene can be transferred and integrated in the viral or bacterial genes, which may lead to viral or bacterial gene modification or mutation. And it may cause new diseases. Depende. No? So, yung mga modified na viruses at nagiging vaccine. So, yan ay tinuturok sa tao para maging resistant tayo doon sa virus na yon. Pagka naging resistant na tayo, hindi na tayo tatablan. Or else, ang risk niya is um, magka, magkikreate siya ng bagong sakit sa atin. So, yun yung mga side effect ng vaccine. So, there are direct and indirect environmental risk. So, for direct environmental risk, we have uh, introduction of the GMOs in the natural environment may cause disruption of the natural communities through competition. Number two, the possibility of unexpected behavior ng mga GMOs in the environment if it is escape, escapes its intended use and may be post threats or become pest. Na modify siya. And naging pest. Uh, for example, lang dito, yung mga minu-modify na hayop ng ating mga scientists, it can be dangerous. No? Kasi baka magkaroon siya or mag, uh, tama, magkaroon siya ng ibang behavior and maka-harm siya sa humans or other, other uh, animals. So, number three, may cause harmful effects to ecosystem processes if GMOs interfere with the natural biochemical cycles. And number four, the persistence of GMO genes after its harvest, which may cause negative impacts to the consumers of GMO products. Since meron yung mga risky, no? so hindi natin may iwasan na uh, mag-cause siya ng negative impact sa, sa consumer. Kasi, uh, karam Uh, nagkaroon ng issue to dati, yung BT eggplant dito sa atin sa Philippines. Kasi yan yung kauna-unahang uh, product, GMO product na pinayagan publicly consumed sa Pilipinas. So yung iba ayaw kainan yung BT uh, eggplant kasi nga there is a certain risk daw sa ating health. And hindi pa ala kung ano. Now for the indirect, Uh, in direct environmental risk, we have alteration of agricultural practices like managing negative impacts of GMOs to the environment such as evolution of insects, pests, and weeds that became resistant to GMO crops. So, maaari siyang magkaroon ng bagong uh, insects, ng pest, ng weeds na resistant na rin siya doon sa mga GMO crops. Meaning, kahit gumawa ka siya or i-modify mo siya na resistant to a certain pest or insect, hindi na tatalag kasi uh, that insect or pest is resistant na rin doon sa GMO crop, uh, products or crops. So, it may have impacts to biodiversity that is caused by the alteration in the agricultural practices And it may have varied environmental impacts due to the GMO's interaction and release in the natural environment. So we have also potential health risk caused by GMOs. So a major concern is the use of consumption ng GMO products and its effect 
sa atin, sa human beings, primarily on our health, on our health. So, some potential human health risks are identified. So, number one, consume, consumption of GMOs may have diverse effects since it's not naturally or organically produced. Of course, no, kasi modified siya. So, meron at meron talagang epekto. Consumption of GMOs may alter the balance of existing microorganisms in the human digestive system. So, uh, maaari siyang makapag-produce ng bacteria. Kasi ang katawan natin has a million or trillions of bacteria. Ang body ng tao, no? may millions or trillions of bacteria. So, pwede siyang makapag-create ng existing uh, imbalance sa ating digestive systems. So, production of toxins may be deter detrimental to human health. No? And uh, production, uh, production of allergens may have adverse effects on humans. So, human genome project. So, this is the long-term research effort to identify the estimated 30,000 genes in human DNA. So, the human genome project is a global long-term research effort para ma-identify nga yung estimated na 30,000 genes sa, sa human DNA natin. Or they all, uh, and, and para ma-figure out yung uh, mga sequences ng chemical bases that make up the human's uh, DNA. So, uh, they find or the findings are being collected in a database that the research share and the biases in much power for those who have the information disadvantages for those that do not have it. So number six is the mutation of genetically engineered microorganisms. So they become more resistant. And number six is the cloning. So sa cloning, no, on, in February, uh, February 24, 1997, so the first mammal, Dolly, si Dolly ay isang sheep from Scotland, and he was born through cloning. So with its celebrated success, it came from the fear of human cloning. Since nagkaroon na nga tayo ng sheep cloning, no, nagkaroon din ng fear or there is a certain issue na baka magkaroon na rin ng human cloning. So, worldwide, there are many groups na nagka-campaign against GMO food consumption. And they encourage to boycott the GMO products and be vigilant in the Philippines. And the, the Supreme Court was ruled against the use of BT eggplant. The BT eggplant. Okay. So, the biosafety on GMOs. Wait lang. So, in the Philippines, we have the Codex Aliment uh, Alimentary Rules Commission Codex or the Codex. So, this is an intergovernmental uh, body that develops the Codex Alimentarius known as International Food for Gold. So, this is responsible for the development of standards codes of practices, guidelines, and recommendations on food safety. So, with the pressing issue ng uh, issues and concerns regarding sa GMOs, so, nag-develop ang codex ng uh, principles for the human health risk analysis of genetically modified uh, food products. So, the principles include pre-market assessments ng mga GMO products and yung evaluation ng direct and indirect effects nun. However, ang codex principles ay no, uh, has no binding effect on national legislation but through the sanitary and site, uh, phytosanitary measures lang ng uh, WTO or the World Trade Organization. In yung national legislators are encouraged to complement their national standards with the codex principles. Kasi yung mga BT naman, uh, GMO products, is hindi naman um, actually dito sa Philippines. So, galing naman siyang ibang bansa. So, meron tayong codex 
elementary uh, for the responsible development ng standards, goal practices, guidelines, and recommendations ng food and safety. Pero yung measures ng World Trade Organization is hindi nila hawak. No? So next, we have the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. So this was established on 2003. So the Cartagena Protocol is an international environmental treaty that regulates the transboundary movements of living modified organisms. So this is for the living modified organisms naman. So ang Cartagena Protocol, they requires exporters to seek consent from the importers before it is first uh, shipment before the first shipment of the LN hoax. And next is the International Trade Agreement on Labeling of GM Food Product and Food uh, Products. So the agreement requires exporters ng mga GM food and food products na lagyan ng label yung kanilang products and bigyan ng rights to importing parties na i-reject or i-accept yung mga GM products. And that premises of this policy is that the consumers have the right to know and the freedom to choose between the, uh, the GM or the non-GM products. Okay. So the World uh, Health Organization or the WHO, they claims that lahat ng GM products that are available in the international market have peace safety assessment by national authorities. So napagdaanan niya lahat ng mga uh, initiatives ng Philippines, no? ng context ng Philippines. So the safety assessments basically look at the environmental and the health risk factors ng uh, food safety usually ay uh, sinusunod yung food ex food code. So, GMOs in the Philippine context, so, yung introduction ng GMOs in our country created issues and controversies that are similar to other countries with GMOs. So, there are, of course, no proponents and opponents of these issues. So, the, the GMO concern started in 1990s with the creation of the National Committee on Biosafety of the uh, Philippines or the NCBP through Executive Order Number 430 of 1990 or 430 of 1990. And the NCBP ay nagdevelop ng guidelines uh, on the planned release of genetically manipulated organisms or the GMOs and yung potentially harmful exotic species uh, in 1998. So, in 2002, no, ang Department of Agriculture ay nag-release ng Administrative Order Number 8 uh, and the guideline for the importation and release into the environment of the GM plants and plant products. So, on the same year, the entry of GMO importation started. So, nagkaroon na tayo ng, ng, ng GMO plants dito sa Philippines. So, the Philippines was marked to be the first country sa Asia na nag-approve ng commercial cultivation ng GMOs noong ang GM corn planting ay na-approve noong 2002. Now, from December 2002 up to present, there are 70 GMO applications approved by the Department of Agriculture for the release to the environment. And 60 to doon sa mga GMOs na yon, which are approved for food feed and processing. And walo ay na-approved for propagation. So, in 2004, ang Philippines was classified by International Service for Accusation of Agribiotech Applications as one of the 14 biotech mega countries which grow 5 or 50,000 hectares or more of GMO crops. So, annually, uh, annually, in that same year, si Senator Juan Flavier ang nag author ng bill on the mandatory labeling ng food and food products with GMOs. And the Senate did not pass the bill. So, in, in, okay. So, in 2006, no, the Philippines become part of the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. So, in the same year, 
nagkaroon ng executive order number 514 that na issue to address the biosafety requirements ng Cartagena Protocol and ang establishment ng National Biosafety Framework or the NBF. So, noong 2010, the Organic Agriculture Act ay na-issue encouraging ng or, uh, or encouraging ng organic agriculture than GMO. So, instead na GMO ay uh, organic agriculture na lang. So, prior to this act, there are several provinces gaya ng Negros Occidental and Negros Oriental which agreed na supportahan ng organic agriculture. And there was the establishment of the Negros Organic Island through a Memorandum of Agreement or MOA between these two provinces in 2005. So, gamit yung MOA na yon, yung two provinces na yan, they were able to ban the entry of GMOs and leaving GMOs to their provinces. So, through provincial ordinance. So, similar to this case, ang Davao City then they passed the Organic Agriculture Ordinance in 2010. So, the city ordinance ay uh, nakatulong na mag-prevent ng field testing ng kanilang uh, GMBT eggplant in the UP Mindanao campus. So, noong 2012, uh, Representative Teddy Casino, together with other congressmen, they filed a bill publishing for the mandatory labeling ng GM food and food products. Up to date, now, there is no Philippine biosafety law, only biosafety regulations for, uh, form under the NBF. So, a study on the biosafety regulations of the Philippines concluded that Ang existing regulation natin is weak, which can be fixed through legislation such as the Republic Act, sana. So, in December 2015, the Supreme Court ordered to put an end to the field testing of GMO, BT, eggplant, and nag-declare sila ng Administrative Order Number 8, Series of 2002, of the Department of Agriculture as null and void. So that means that lahat ng actions or procedures that is related to the GMO importations and propagations is temporarily put to stop until merong bagong administrative order ang i-issue in accordance with that law or napayagan yang pag-field uh, testing ng ating GMO products. So in March 7, 2016, five government agencies, namely the Department of Science and Technology, Department of Agriculture, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the Department of Health, and the Department of uh, Interior and Local Government, ay nagpasa sila ng Joint uh, Department Circular Number 1 Series of 2016 uh, regarding the rules and regulations for the research and development, handling that issue. So, transboundary movement and yung pag-release ng environment and management ng genetically modified plant and plant products that is derived from the use of modern biotechnology. So, this joint depart uh, departmental circular paves way sa pag uh, issuance, doon sa issuance ng mga bagong permits for planting and importing the GM products in the country. Kaya hanggang ngayon, meron pa rin tayong mga GM products dito sa ating country. So, for the summary of this lesson, the genetic engineering is an engineering field of science. So, it quests are to preserve or to preserve and prolong lives. So, in more than four decades since the first genetically modified bacteria was produced, uh, thousands of genetically modified organisms na ang na-create and na-propagate. So, yung ilan doon ay approved by the experts and the government authorities for human use and consumptions while your others naman ay keep in institutional research or laboratories subject for more experiments. So, this or there are advantages and disadvantages in using genetic engineering in both fields of medicine and food, uh, food and agriculture. And there, there are controversies that are still debated up to the present. So a major concern ng opponents is the long-term effect ng GMOs to humans while the proponents flagship naman is yung success stories ng mga GMO recipients. So, hindi talaga mawawala yung controversies in any innovations. No? 
And there is still a long way to go for GMOs to prove itself. As humans uh, seek answers to life's predicaments, or as humans place uh, like God. So that's all for our um, lesson, uh, the genetically modified organism. So thank you and uh, have a nice day.